baby come give me something oh. If your employer is requiring you to undertake COVID-19 testing before you go to work, that's completely okay. However, they need to pay you for that time that you are going to COVID-19 testing. If they make you go to COVID testing on your own time, make sure you track your hours and send it to HR. If your employer is requiring you to take COVID-19 testing before you go to work, they need to pay for it. California Labor Code 222.5 says that when your employer requires you to take a medical examination, they need to pay for it. It's illegal for them to make you pay for it. If your employer is requiring you to take COVID-19 testing at a separate clinic, they cannot require you to use your insurance to pay for it, even if your insurance covers it. Your employer is required to pay for any essential expenditure that they require you to take. That's under Labor Code 2802. If your employer is requiring you to take daily temperature checks before you're allowed to go to work due to COVID-19, they cannot require that you insert it into their app. Like they can't make you buy their app and then make you put all of those daily checks in there. What they can do is they can make you email to HR. We all know that there are waiting time penalties in California. Now your employer is typically required to pay you waiting time penalties if they willfully hold your check. So if they terminate you and they don't provide your last paycheck on that day, there's a chance that they might not owe you waiting time penalties. For example, your employer is allowed to pay you your last paycheck in the same way that they paid all of your other paychecks. So if you typically receive direct deposit, they can pay you your last paycheck via direct deposit. If they typically mailed out your check to you, then they could probably mail your check out to you on your last day. You know, the uh, Division of Labor Standards Enforcement is kind of split when it comes to determining if there's waiting time penalties because it's a very fact-intensive analysis. For example, if your employer gives you your last paycheck, they normally mailed it to you, so they mailed this one out to you. Then COVID-19 hit, so then there was a delay in getting your paycheck. I'm not sure if you would be entitled to waiting time penalties in that case, but you never know. Ooh, this is another really good question. In California, if you're an hourly worker and you work an eight-hour shift, you are entitled to two 10-minute paid breaks. If your employer is not allowing you to take those breaks, you need to start documenting the days where you don't take a break. Now, one argument that they're going to say is, oh, we allowed them to take a break. They chose not to. So you definitely need to ask your supervisor, your manager, hey, I need to take a break. I'm going to take one. If they say no, then you need to document that. But hopefully they should say yes, because that's the law. Thank you for asking this question. I really appreciate it. This is actually a really good question. If you're getting sexually harassed by an executive, you definitely need to go to HR. And if it's an executive, you could also report it to other executives. If you're working at a small business and this is happening, then you need to contact a lawyer because this is not okay. Gosh, this just happened again. If your employer terminates you, they need to provide you your last paycheck on that day. And they can't just say, hey, because of COVID-19, we're going to pay you next Friday during our pay period. This whole last paycheck rule is meant for you to have your last interaction with your employer on your last day. If they willfully choose to pay you one week later, then they're willing to pay those waiting time penalties for you. So ask your employer, hey, I know you're providing me my paycheck a week late. Can you make sure that those waiting time penalties are included in my last paycheck? If they say no and for you to buzz off, say, okay, that's fine. Then you go to the Division of Labor Standards Enforcement's website. You go click on file a claim for waiting time penalties or other wage and hour claims. Then when you file that complaint, one section is you have to list how many days late that the payment was. And it's easy. Just write an estimate. You know, if you're not sure, have one of those estimated lines right before the number. With the DLSC, you're always able to amend your complaint. Now, good luck. Hey, Erica, no problem. Thanks for commenting and please share. The Division of Labor Standards Enforcement is actually a really efficient uh, administrative agency. As a matter of fact, if you go in there during non-COVID times, they'll even help you fill out your complaint and submit it. So hey, Brittany, Nicole, good news. You're in luck. In California, <clears throat> excuse me, wage and hour claims regarding unpaid wages and waiting time penalties has a three-year statute of limitations. So even if it happened two years ago, you could still file a complaint with the Division of Labor Standards Enforcement for waiting time penalties. So good luck. In 2014, California enacted an anti-bullying statute. This requires managers to undertake anti-bullying training. So all harassment trainings now need to have a module on abusive conduct. What abusive conduct means is intentional conduct by an employer or an employee that a reasonable person would have find offensive and unrelated to any business purpose, and that may include repeated verbal abuse. Some of the verbal abuse examples are uses of racial epithets or derogatory terms. 
insults that can also threaten, intimidate, or humiliate one of the employees. That includes physical contact. It also includes sabotaging or undermining an employee's work. And that's what we see most of when someone else undermines your work performance and you get penalized because of it. Now, I don't believe that there are any causes of action that you could bring if you are being bullied at work, but your work is required to train its managers. Hey everyone, I just want to say thank you for watching all of my videos on California employment law, as well as the videos on current events. Uh, one cool question that I received is, are people able to share this? So, and the answer is absolutely, of course, you're able to share these videos. And you know that's why I try to keep a lot of my employment law related videos just educational, factual, and straight law. You know, I do analyze certain cases after I read them, but I, the videos and the content I create here, I want to be scalable. I want you to be able to share with a friend who may have a particular question about a, the law. I want you to be able to share it with a coworker who might be in a certain situation where they might need a little more information. Um, but most importantly, I also want to open myself up and open my email account up for any questions that people have regarding California employment law or current events. So you'll be able to see my email down in the caption and we'll start paying attention to it.